I'm Magnus Walker and I've been obsessed with Porsches for the past 45 years. I've built, collected, driven, raced and restored quite a lot of P cars in my time. But this show is all about other people's Porsches. So take a ride along with me as I find out all there is to know about OPP. New York City is one of the world's greatest full of inspiration around every turn. It has it all, but ultimately it's the people that make it so special. And today I'm with Charles Lennon, a dentist who spent his life working with his hands. This time though, he's not fixing teeth. Uh, fast life, the fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past driven. Look, we are not the same, this is not a game. I've been swerving through the city in and out of lanes. Cause if I see it, then I won't. He's fixing Porsches that he taught himself how to do with a little help from his friends, of course. Yeah. First place, you can never... So Charles, Tangerine Dream 69, what is it, a T-E-S? What are we at? It's a 69T. This is obviously not your first Porsche. When did you acquire your first Porsche? My first Porsche was a 78 911 SC, and when I bought it, it had a dent on the front hood, and I told myself, don't fix it, drive it, yeah. enjoy it. And I loved it, I had a great time with that car. T, but obviously this is no longer a two-liter T. The reason it changed was there was no engine and no transmission. This was a shell with 50 boxes. It's interesting because at first glance, obviously it's long hood, not flared, doesn't look modified, looks like a 911, the iconic shape. But when you soak in the details, so much has been changed to it. What I see is what I would call the 356 inspired twin deck lid grill. Right. Tell me what inspired this grill setup for you. I have a 62 uh, twin grill Roadster. So in my garage, I had it up on a lift. This car was down below facing that car. Okay. 10.30 at night, having a scotch, relaxing. And I look up and I said, you know, those two grills, I think if I turn them sideways, that's gonna look right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did it and it looked right. Yeah, it fits real clean. So Charles, heart and soul of any Porsche is the engine. Absolutely. You built a 3.4, I assume you built it on a 3.2? Yes. Tell me yes. about it. With the outlaw idea is putting best suspension, um, biggest brakes, so you want an engine that's substantial, all right? So yes, we started out with a 3.2, 915 trans, all right? It was Gaspar Fazulo, you know, he found the motor, we brought it to my garage, we disassembled it there. That allowed me to do all the detail work that I love to do. Got it. Okay, sent out for machine work, then we reassembled it in my garage. How much horsepower do you think this has? 280? About 285. Like? Okay. Yeah, Gaspari, his genius is that he has one person that he knows, one person to do the pump, one person to do the CD boxes. Those aren't the stock CD right. boxes. They're just a facade which hides all of the, guts the modern guts, all right? So there's one gentleman, twin coil. He measured all the wires. He did all the resistance on the wires. Gaspari has someone for everything, sent out the throttle bodies. So that's the beauty of working with him. There's a lot of different flavors of tangerine. You got hemi orange, hoga orange, tangerine. What shade of orange sunshine is this? I wanted, in my mind, I wanted a burnt orange. And that's what I found. I went down to Pinot's shop, brought out the books, looked at all the little tabs. I said, that's the one I want. Black truck. Black truck. Black truck Black orange. Truck orange. So I'm seeing a third color here, which at a glance looks black, but it's not. It's engine sheet metal tin. The fan itself. What color is that? It's the kind of seat, purple. The seat rails in the car, yeah. all that. So, I, again, creativity and colors. Orange, the graphite gray, I wasn't sure, but it really does work. I said, I wanted the third color. 
and I just sat and relaxed too easy. So I came up with eggplant. Eggplant. Very good. Are you doing this fab work yourself? Yeah. Okay, okay. I love it. What changed your life? Marriage, kids. No, when I learned how to weld. Well, that was it. That was it. Changed my life. About the exhaust system, what are you running? Headers into what muffler and what is going on? I, I wanted the heater boxes. Yeah. The muffler, I, when I ordered it up, I said, do not cut any holes in the back of the muffler. And I said, what are you talking about? I said, look, I'm making a custom tip and I want to, I mounted it. Is this more 356 inspiration? Yes, because the 356, Almost they, like have a the, stinger. they have the Lamar tip or the Stinger tip, yeah. and it's the single pipe with the oval around it with the supports. And those supports are somewhat 917 inspired, I yeah, think. Yeah. What is stopping this car? Brakes. Going back to Outlaw, you want the biggest brakes. The limiting factor to... Wheel size. What I love brakes. about this is you kept it period correct 15 by 7s all round. How do you get the brake caliper under a 15 inch wheel? Tell me. Well, the 917s had 15, 15 inch wheels. So you're running 917 calipers? Yes. Got it. Yes. Got it, got it. All right. Uh, they Who can, made those calipers? Zuffenhausen in North Carolina. Okay. Walk me through suspension. You got all this whammy looking low hung tarot. It's the sway bars that, adjustable. Right, right. You know, the, the adjustable spring plates. Um, it was built once with a stock suspension. Okay. And when we went to align it, it just wasn't working. Okay. Took it all off, redid it as coil. I love how, even though it's bright orange, it's kind of stealth because it's still somewhat, it's still narrow body. You haven't stretched anything. And you roll it on the uh, 15 by 7 inch Fuchs with these sticky Hoosier tires. One of the things I really love that's super subtle is the detail that you put on the Fuchs. Tell me about that process. So what I did was, I had the rims cut, but you can see the machine-like effect that was yeah, left in there. I got it. All right. Then I taped off the wheel, so the one color goes on, it was all the orange, and then I taped all that off and Negative I did the gray. Space. Got it, got it. And then we shot the clear coat. Got and you've got literally about half a millimeter of clearance, which is all you need on that Fin 917 right, right. caliper. Right. Now, they were supposed to fit under these 15-inch wheels. Well, they do fit. Yeah, after about an average of three days per wheel, oh, grinding, oh, fitting, grinding, oh, fitting. So you had to spin and then when they were done, okay, they peeled all the weights off. Oh, got it, got it. Did you have a hard time balancing the wheel in? Yeah. You did? <laughs> got yeah. it. And are you tracking the car? No. You're not doing track days. I've done I've done track since 1988. But not in this car. This was a creative process. This is not for the track. Got it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, tell me who was involved in the build. I know you did a lot of the work yourself, but obviously you had someone mentoring you along the way. Tell me who was involved first with the bodywork. Well, involved at the you. at the top of the list is Pino. Uh, who joined us today, and uh, I'm glad he was here. I saw his passion for the early cars matched my passion. I saw his skills, which didn't match my skills at the time. Yeah. So, it's like um, a match made in heaven, isn't right, it? Right, right. The next would be Gaspari Fazzullo of Gasworks Garage. He found the motor, and we dismantled the entire motor. And it went out to, as I think I described, all the different specialists that he has that take care of certain components. Next uh, person, a uh, great guy, uh, came to my garage for a number of years to help me out, Mike Caracoli, um, nicest guy I ever want to meet. The yeah. other is uh, Roger Pisani. He allowed me three days a week. He's working on that door card, I'm working on this door card. He's doing something. We work together. Um, I think he saw a skill set in me which could be helpful and not a bother. And, you know, they were patient with me, they taught me, and um, I learned and I loved every This is the greatest thing about the Porsche community is bringing people together. Yes. All right, let's see what you got.
Now, first off, I'm amazed that this is staying up. 100 liter plastic tank, this looks OG. Why go, just more lightweight? Porsche reproduced the lightweight plastic. Yeah. Tank. I bought the tank to put in my yellow RS okay. authentic replication. Authentic replication, that's okay. quite a mouthful right there. Yes, it is. And I'm putting this car together and I go, whoa. That'll look nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, that's why it's it. Got it. I see you got your RSR strut bar right there yes, for your cross yes, member. Yes, I hate the ones that bolt on. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I get it. This is, you know, I go into the factory books. I look at the pictures. Period correct. You notice nobody gets any advertising on my car. Outlaw, I see it. You are the OG outlaw. None of my cars get a radio, that's out. You've gone with an early short wheelbase yes. one piece, yes. I see that. Yes, yes, so I found, and again, that was a learning process. I happened to be speaking to someone, and they told me about it, because I didn't know that it existed. Got so it. once I found out, then I did it. Uh, the padded dash, uh, I love the stitching, um, the uh, steering wheel. Why a 914 steering wheel? Because it's a little bit smaller than the 911 Okay. Wheel. Now the thing that really stands out to me is that gated shifter. Is that a Wevo? It's a Wevo shifter. Yeah. Um, I had purchased one in the late 90s for my yellow uh, car, 73, and I've always liked it. Um, a friend came over one day and looked in the car and said, wow, you've got that Wevo shifter. And I said, yeah. He goes, I have one too. And I said, really? He says, yeah, I put it in my car and my wife hated it, so it's on my shelf. I oh. said, I said so, so it's mine. It. There you go, go <laughs> got it. I gotta have it. These are from GTS Stefana, GTS okay. Classics. Uh, it looks like an RSC. Very similar to what I had got in it. 73. And then you've got a bolt-in roll bar to sort of finish it all off. Um, the is this aluminum? Yes. The nice thing about this roll bar is the fact that it follows the B pillar. The outlaw crest. Tell me about that. Porsche well, doesn't make these, this I no, know. No, it's, it's their overall size. So I found a gentleman in New Jersey. Of course, you can get whatever you like done in, whatever you need and get it done in Jersey. Right, he wasn't Italian, but no. All right, right, right wow, that's right, a surprise. Right, right. <laughs> and uh, he made that up. I mean, it's like jewelry, it's incredible. I actually love how you've done the 6.9 graphic down the side. I don't want to insult anybody, but the overall car, the side is pretty slab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, there's nothing really there. There's no lines or anything. So with this car, I needed something. So 69, that's not going to work. So I came up with the idea of 69. You are a creative guy. So Charles is 69. Creative Chaos Outlaw 911 rolling on coilover suspension is really doing a good job of handling the South Street Seaport cobblestone streets. Like all great 911 builds, you just get in, everything feels normal, like it's your own car, and then you start noticing different things. You know, the tank goes to 10,000 RPM. We got a 3 4 twin plug motor purring behind me. He's shown some restraint by not going wide bodied, it hasn't gone down the R or the RS or the ST or the RSR route. He's kept it long hood, narrow bodied, with a touch of 356. Charles did a lot of work on the car himself. He's a dentist, he's been making a living with his hands for 40, 50 years. The Porsche thing for him is a hobby. That's something I can definitely relate to. This is what he calls creative chaos, which is a pretty cool term, I have to say. I'm actually looking forward to escaping the city, putting the pedal down, and actually seeing what it really does when you keep your foot planted, and you go pedal to the metal and feel the power of that 3-4 twin plug just pushing you down the road. So I'm going to wait for this light to change, grab a gear, and push on. I'll see you guys down the road. Fast life, the fast living. They see the ambition, they know I'm past drift. Look, we are not the same, this is not a 